All right, so what's the deal with the Mets? Are they just feeling the pressure of clinching, or is there is there something that's a real problem here? Well, I think that uh, Cespedes cooled off, even though he had a couple. He got a three-hit day. Um, I think they relied on him so much because I tell you, I've never seen anybody have a five, five, six-week performance like this guy did um, that, that that carried a ball club. So uh, he cooled off, and everybody cooled off with him. Uh, so they're not hitting. We got issues in our bullpen. Um, I think yes, they were feeling a little bit of the pressure at home, and I really feel that. Uh, the road will be good for them. I have, in fact, in the office today, at Terry's office, I asked him if he was glad to be on the road, and he said yes, and I agree 100%. Uh, this team was well under 500 down the road all season long, and now they've got it back to their 500. They're 37 and 37 on the road now. So they're uh, playing two uh, uh, second division teams, and uh, I think they get away from New York. Um, you know, get more focused. And uh, I always felt less pressure on the road than I did at home in clutch situations. So I think that'll be a positive. But uh, certainly they haven't hit. We have issues in our bullpen, as you know. I have real concern about Clippard right now. I think they've overworked Clippard. I think that mm. Terry, because he, of the bullpen being thin, uh, had not a lot of depth. Uh, has gone to the whip, and I think that the, the Clipper is a little bit tired. He's not going to use him tonight. He's worked three days in a row. I really think they got to be careful with him. Uh, but uh, we'll see which way it shakes. Uh, it's been interesting. It's, we were, I was just talking with Gary in the booth here we're preparing for the game. If Washington had, had a, a, a real good week, yep. they'd be right back in it. Yeah, you're right. They can't get out of their own way. Losing again today. Keith, I want to get Duda going. You know, earlier this season, he was as hot as any player in Major League Baseball. What does he need to do to get back on track? He needs to lay off the upstairs fastball and focus on the ball down. And so he's got a, he's got a low ball swing like a typical left-handed power hitter. And um, they've been pounding him inside and belt high and up, and he can't lay off. And they've been pounding him, pounding him there, him there with strikes. And he just can't lay off, and he's just been popping up and popping up and popping up. So, uh, I mean, you keep beating your head against the wall, you know, you got to sooner or later say, okay, i got to make an adjustment. And he just has not made any adjustments. And really, it hasn't been a good year for Lucas. Um, he's um, basically had two hot streaks, one enormously hot, enormous hot streak, was a, where they hit the eight home runs and what? Uh, nine home runs, eight home runs in six days, whatever the hell it was. And then he cooled right back off. So um, I don't know what to tell you. It's not a position that this team is very deep in. The only other alternative is Terry wanted to platoon, which has been his, his want, uh, I mean, his want this year uh, since the, since the, all, since the, all, uh, the, I'm sorry, the trade deadline. He has platooned. Is the only guy, the guy you got to play first base is Kadir. So right. Lucas is an important part of the team. You got to get it going. Here's my concern when I watch them, Keith, and I wonder if you agree. Right before our eyes, they've become a home run hitting team, and home run hitting teams get slowed down by good pitching. I, I've seen it with the Yankees when they get knocked out early in the playoffs. Yep. When you rely on the home run, you can go into slumps against good pitching because good pitchers don't make that many bad pitches. Do you That's see right. that happening with yep. this team? Uh, well, they're going to get a couple, probably the two best in the playoffs, and, and Granky yep. and and uh, the, the other big left hander, Kershaw. Uh, Kershaw. So, yes, that's what um, that's what I like. Uh, I, that's why I like Conforto. I think Conforto is a throwback hitter, a line drive hitter that I think has potential to be a, a batting champion. Uh, but we've made the most of what we have, and every team has a hot streak. Uh, even the bad teams will have a hot streak, one hot streak, hot streak in the course of the season. Uh, good teams will have more than one. Uh, the Mets really had a, their hot streak when they got the uh, what the five guys that came up at the deadline, mm-hmm. um, and uh, that made all the difference in the world. I've never seen five players make that much of a difference in a ball club. And of course, I'm talking about Conforto, Cespedes, Johnson, Kelly, I should say, and uh, Deribe. And Clippard, 
I've never seen five guys turn a ball club around. If we don't have, uh, let alone this Cespedes, of course, but if we don't have those guys, we're playing meaningless games right now. So uh, they've just got to uh, find a way to win again here. We don't have a lot of speed. Granderson's been playing great, and he's really a nice player. I'm glad to see that. He's really kind of warmed up to the leadoff role. But I really don't have any answers for you guys. Uh, they're going to have to go out there and play. That's all there is to it. That's why they play the games. They have to go out there. They're mm-hmm. going to have to drive in runs. They did not hit well on the homestand. I believe they were nine for or six for seventy something on the on the homestand. It was runners in scoring position. Then it's not going to cut it. You have to. Get, they're going to have to go out there and win ball games, and that means perform. Keith, how is Harvey going to be handled in the postseason? You got me. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I really don't know uh, how that's going to. How that's going to play out. Um, right now, uh, I guess he's going to be on a pitch constraint uh, to the end of the year. Uh, when the playoffs come, uh, your guess is as good as mine. I don't think I, I, I have a strange hunch that he's not going to be coming out in the fifth inning. Well, that would be a good thing. Yes. <laughs> he threw great against you guys. It's, you yeah. see that stuff. It's great stuff. I think that the two ballparks that the Mets are playing in, um, Cincinnati now tonight, and then the Phillies, that might be the, the pure tonic for this team, as you said, getting on the road, but also ballparks that yield home runs. This might be just what the doctor ordered. Uh, they are. I would love to play 81 games in these two ballparks coming up, that's for sure. I would have been a 25 home run guy uh, playing you know, every day in, in Cincinnati or Philly in those parks, but um, I think you're right. Uh, the the pitching, uh, uh, DeGrom is going to have a couple of days off, but he's going to pitch this weekend. Uh, Matt's is pitching tonight, and Matt's, this is his fourth start, I believe, since coming back, and he really hasn't gotten back to form yet. I, uh, he's, he's, he's a work in progress trying to get there, and it's been bothering him because he really was a shame he got hurt. He came up, had the two great starts and came up in a groove and a rhythm where he had just he just oh, dominated AAA. And I think he's a bit frustrated, and I think he's trying too hard. You know, and these things just don't happen overnight. So tonight's a big start for him. We're going to need those guys. Our pitching is going to have to be the ones that are going to carry this team in the playoffs. They're going to have to pitch like they've pitched all year. Talking with Keith Hernandez of SNY. First pitch is 7-10, Mets and the Reds tonight from Cincy. Before I let you go, Keith, we spoke all of yesterday's show about the uh, the passing of Yogi Berra. Did you ever have any yeah. interaction with Yogi? Oh, certainly. I've had a lot of interaction with Yogi, and I said it on the air. Yogi made me feel like he was the above-average player and I was the Hall of Famer. You know, and... Um, He was just such a wonderful uh, guy to me, and I enjoyed talking baseball with him. And, of course, he would love to talk baseball. And uh, just a lovely man. I mean, there's everything that's been said about him is true. He was one of the really true great characters and good human beings. And if you look at his numbers, I don't know, you guys probably, you being the Yankee broadcast, uh, Gary mentioned something that for seven years in a row – with DiMaggio and the front end of his career and Mantle towards the end of his career, uh, he led the Yankees in RBIs seven years in a row, something like that, with DiMaggio and, and Mantle on the team. That says a lot right there, doesn't it? And never struck out. already. You know that Bryce Harper already has more career strikeouts than Yogi had? Yeah, I hear you. Um, just a uh, great career, great clutch hitter. And you know what? Uh, what five foot nine, a little guy, and uh, a bad ball hitter, high ball hitter, didn't walk. I mean, the most walks he ever had in his career was sixty six. You know, today's game, they might have said, "Hey, you can't play, kid. Sorry." <laughs> yeah, you don't strike out enough. <laughs> <laughs> just like you don't walk enough. <laughs> You anyway, don't Keith, enough, you don't take enough pitches. That's right. That's right. Keith, thanks for coming on. Tell Gary we hey. said hello and enjoy the right. uh, enjoy the time in Cincy. All right, and you guys have a great finish to your season. Good luck in the playoffs.